In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins. And we apologize to God using the following prayer. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I've greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Mass today is being offered for the healing of Mildred Reckla, Amy Reckla, Lucas Balanchit, Eric Lopez, Felicissima Castro, Chelsea Dixon, Gabriel Lazari, Alex Tardicilla, Roar Fertadis, Gina Bellaton, Maria Morales, Agnes Vu, Chris Ajenga, Bon Ruth Padon, Benjamin Demelo Kearns, Feli Callis, Peter Kajalov, Andrew Maniz, Eduardo Morales, Mercedes Fagan, Magda Gabriel, Christine Eusebio, Conchita Maria Battencourt Medeiros, Emma Ho Lawrence. Isabel Martins, Baby Valentina, Aurelia Delara, Olivia C, Jesse, Charo Popo, Zid Zappo, Michael Mello, Matthew Bakari, Michael A, Norma Pitcher, Madeline Lee, Benal Fernandez, Rolando Monacal, Sarah DeMello, Irma Barico, Maria Lilia Tienza, Pacifico Trabado Jr., Arias Magali, Santino De Vito, Rugaba Benjamin, Free Daniel, Louis Medeiros, Rizzuto Antonio, Ludvina Fernandez, Yolanda Kim. For the intentions of Elio Madania, Arceli Bellanon, Elmora Pasqua, Sheila Aquino, Brigham Mila Cueva, Eveline Richard, Benny Garza, Evelyn and Eugenio Cruz, all volunteers in the parish. For the souls of Felix, Antonio Sorubi, John, all souls in purgatory. We pray. Almighty ever living God, let us feel your compassion more readily during these days when by your gift we have known it more fully so that those who have freed from the darkness of error may cling more firmly to the teachings of your truth. We ask this to our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, second person of the Trinity, who lives and reigns with you, Father and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candice, queen of Ethiopians in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join him. So Philip ran up to it and heard, heard the official reading the prophet Isaiah. Philip asked, do you understand what you are reading? The official replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom may I ask you? Does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with his scriptures, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? 
And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he replied, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out to the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Asotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard, who has kept us among the living and has not let our feet slip. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Come and hear, all you who fear God, and I will tell what he has done for me. I cried aloud to him, and he was extolled with my tongue. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. Let all, Let the, all the earth cry out to God with joy. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the living bread from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Those who had been fed by the five loaves followed Jesus to the other side of the lake and asked him for a sign that they should believe in him. Jesus said to them, no one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. My brothers and sisters, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the gospel reading, we have the famous story of Philip and the eunuch, Philip opening up the scriptures as Jesus Christ did to the disciples and teaching him who Jesus Christ was and ultimately the eunuch gets baptized and ultimately comes to faith. There is an internal desire for God planted in every human being. We are created in the image of God. And in us, there is this innate desire to learn more of God, to know more of God. It's important that when we make disciples, as we've been focusing during Lent, that we understand that innate desire. In other words, it isn't all up to us. It's not like we have to be so amazing a teacher or a witness that the person comes to faith through us. People come to faith through God the Holy Spirit. So one has to leave room for God the Holy Spirit because there's two mistakes typically made in evangelization. One is saying too much and overwhelming the person. The other is saying too little and not feeding them what they need. Um, whenever we interact with people, in whatever circumstances it may be, where we are teaching our faith, that balance, wisdom, if you wish, from the Holy Spirit enables us to determine what the person needs because every individual is different and you have to deal with them 
as individuals uh, based on their history, based on their personality type, uh, based on where they are in their walk with God. And that's why it's important to take time to get to know these people that one is evangelizing. Uh, because ultimately, they have to be dealt with on an individual by individual by individual basis. Uh, that is part of the story of Philip and the eunuch in terms of Philip really understanding what he needed in order to come to ultimately ask for baptism, uh, which is the ultimate goal part of the Great Commission is baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. But to bring someone to that point, one needs to walk with them, journey with them in faith, and ultimately treat them as individuals. Because again, we're all different, and we all have different histories and different ways. I was mentioning that I've been doing a number of marriage interviews. And again, I try to be with these people. I take a long time. Uh, in my meeting with them. I don't do quickie 20-minute, half-hour marriage interviews. I always warn them, have dinner before you come, because you're looking at about three hours uh, in terms of us getting to know one another and me getting to know you, what family you come from, what background you come from, where are you in your journey with God, um, how, where's the room for improvement, uh, what is needed to bring this relationship to its full spiritual potential. One can't do that quickly. That takes time. And that's why I spend the three hours with the couples, guiding them, forming them, trying to direct them in terms of what God expects. Uh, this is what each and every one of us is supposed to do. Take the time with the people. You can't just generally give it to everybody the same way uh, because there are so many variables to consider what sort of family did they come from, what sort of upbringing did they have, how seriously did their parents take this, what sort of friends do they have, uh, the friends do they have, is it guiding them in the faith or not. So again, it, it takes time and one has to really be careful in terms of how one dialogues and again, leaving room for the Holy Spirit to work in their lives so that hopefully they want more uh, they get hungry in terms of realizing, oh, I need this bread from heaven. Um, and ultimately, that's where the gospel kicks in, in terms of the Lord promising he is the bread from heaven. John chapter 6, the famous Eucharistic statement of the Lord in terms of being the bread of life. Uh, this is what we ultimately help them to come to, is taking that spiritual nourishment, um, ultimately leading them to the Eucharist, ultimately leading them to uh, a deep, deep intimacy with Jesus Christ, because that's what ultimately will keep them in love with one another according to how we define love. And again, because in many cases, uh, these couples have dated a long time and have been guiding each other, um, we need to help in that process uh, because ultimately there's always room for improvement. And that's why, you know, initially I, I go simple, I go down the Ten Commandments, uh, we discuss how they're doing, I try to define the commandments for them in a way perhaps they haven't been taught before. Um, you know, the classic example is thou shalt not steal. Uh, most people think that's just taking something that doesn't belong to you, which it obviously is, but it goes way beyond that. It is our social justice commandment. So I challenge them on what have they done for the third world. I challenge them on keeping within the marriage uh, an awareness of their obligation to the third world. Under the commandment, thou shalt not steal, because if you don't give to the poor, you steal from the poor. And important to make them more sensitive to that. So that's the direction I take them in and ultimately help to guide them. Uh, again, this is what each and every one of us should do, but always leaving that room for God, the Holy Spirit, to nurture them because they are hungry, they want their marriage to be successful. And whenever anyone is in a transition phase of life, whether it be uh, a new marriage, 
a new child, a new phase of life, a new job, um, a new state uh, in terms of their parents getting older. Um, that's a transition moment. And it's in that transition moment, very much like the eunuch today, that ultimately they're hungry uh, because they want their child to reach their full potential. They want the marriage to reach their full potential. And if we can guide them that way in helping them to realize that with the Lord, they can do that. Without the Lord, they cannot. They'll be stagnant or even worse, they'll backslide, they'll go more secular. So if we can guide them in this way as Philip did with the eunuch, they'll meet their full potential. They'll be joy-filled. Uh, they'll ultimately come to a deep awareness of what the faith can do for them in helping them to reach their full potential. The other side of that is you have to consider where they're coming from. Uh, we all uh, have uh, issues. Uh, none of us had the perfect parents. None of us had the perfect family. Um, we all have issues that have to be dealt with. And ultimately, uh, you go through that with them as well uh, because uh, repentance and an awareness in wisdom of where one comes from is important and ultimately brings people to that awareness of what do I have to do in order to reach my full potential. So this is the joy that one can have in guiding people spiritually. I always enjoy uh, doing marriage interviews. I enjoy meeting people, baptism classes. Um, and ultimately, we should seek to do that with each other um, whenever we can, because ultimately, uh, there is a tremendous joy uh, in leading people to Christ, in guiding them uh, in the journey uh, that will ultimately uh, guide them, hopefully, into heaven. Uh, that's the hope that we have. We're working on the t-shirt. Um, uh, we've decided on the front, make heaven crowded. To keep people focused on that, that is the goal. The goal is to make heaven crowded. The goal is to guide them in that direction. And ultimately, baptism and, again, that Holy Spirit coming to the person uh, is how uh, we guide them in that way. Uh, so, again, keep evangelizing, keep witnessing, uh, keep speaking to people about faith and teaching them as um, Philip did so brilliantly uh, with the eunuch that ultimately had him ask for baptism. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness receive the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O oh God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant we pray that as we have come to know your truth. We may make it ours by a worthy way of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time between Easter and Pentecost, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic Hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope Francis Leo, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer each other now. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve God and each other. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast to hell, Satan, and all the evil spirits wander through the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we set up our sides, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Thank you all for coming. God bless you all.